Welcome back to the analytical chemistry and instrumental analysis playlist. Um, what we're going to do in this video is talk a little bit about a really cool phenomenon called fluorescence. Okay. And before we get into the nitty gritty details of fluorescence, I want to talk about what it is from a very general perspective. And it's basically a type of emission. And basically what emission essentially is, is it just means to release something. And in the context of this type of phenomenon, what it's emitting is a photon, okay, a photon of light. Okay, so a photon of light. And we typically abbreviate in this context light as this HV. Um, and what that essentially means is the following. Every photon of light has a, a particular energy. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a few equations that are needed to really fundamentally understand this. Number one, we have this famous equation where the energy of a photon is equal to this uh, Planck's constant times the speed of light in a vacuum divided by the wavelength of the photon. And this is consequently also equal to Planck's constant times the frequency of the photon. And the reason we can say this is because the frequency of the photon is equal to the speed of light in a vacuum divided by the wavelength of the photon. So these are some important equations to know. And before we go any further, I want to point some uh, fundamental relationships out to you. Um, number one, we see that in this equation right here, we have in the numerator on the left side, energy of the photon, and then on the right side, wavelength of the photon is in the denominator. So what we can essentially say is that whenever you have a high energy, that's going to correspond to a low wavelength. Whenever you have a low energy of a photon, that's going to correspond to a high wavelength. And the reason that you can make these predictions is because um, they are inversely proportional to one another. Okay, That's not the case with frequency. With frequency, energy and frequency are directly proportional to one another. And likewise, you can also say that frequency and wavelength are inversely proportional. But what I'm going to be focusing on in these videos are going to be energy and wavelength, at least for now. Okay. So just to kind of orient you with this picture over here, basically what we have over here is we have a ground state electronic configuration. So this bold line sort of right here represents the ground state of the electrons in an atom or molecule. And then over here, this sort of T1 right here, the S1 and the S2, these represent sort of excited states that the electrons can be in. And we're going to find that you essentially have to use light to excite electrons from the ground state into any kind of excited state. So what I want to talk about before we get into this diagram is talk a little bit about uh, this question. What happens when a molecule of formaldehyde, which is shown right here, what happens when formaldehyde absorbs light? Okay, so we start out here with uh, we start out here with sort of the ground state electronic configuration. So this over here represents the ground state, and I can I can identify some certain things in here. I notice that this thing that says n right here, um, there are no orbitals above that that are occupied. And I know that energy is increasing going up here. So what I can say is that this is the highest occupied molecular orbital because there are no higher energies in which there are electrons occupying it. Okay, So this is the highest occupied molecular orbital. Likewise, I look at this pi star right here, and I see that, um, first of all, if I were to go up and up and up, there would be empty orbitals, and none of them have electrons in them. So this one is unoccupied, below that's occupied, and above that, of course, is unoccupied. Okay, so this represents the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital. So we have the HOMO and the LUMO. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to expose formaldehyde to photons of light. And so what can happen is this molecule can absorb the light, and effectively what's going to happen is an electron from the HOMO can be promoted into the LUMO. And that's effectively what's shown right here. This right here, uh, this right here is a singlet. 
excited state. And this one is a triplet excited state. Maybe we'll have a whole video on distinguishing the difference between the singlet and triplet excited states. But the whole idea is that you can take electrons from the HOMO and put them into the LUMO by exposing a molecule to light. Okay, so that's what effectively what we're going to be talking about in this video. And by the way, when you expose a molecule or atom to light and electrons get raised in energy, this process is called absorption. Absorption of light. Okay, and it turns out that absorption, like we just saw, promotes electrons from the HOMO into the LUMO. Okay. If you've taken organic chemistry and you've studied things like uh, conjugated pi electron systems and aromaticity, you've probably seen some of this before. Okay, So basically this S1 right here, this is really just one uh, singlet excited state that you can have. S2 is also a singlet excited state. But for the most part, let's now just sort of focus on S1. Okay, And there's several things I want to focus on in this picture. Number one, this sort of line right here, this really bold black line. Okay, This represents the minimum energy needed to produce fluorescence. Okay, Because notice, if I sort of extend this red line over here, once you get to this energy right here, immediately what's going to happen is a photon is going to be emitted, and that's the process of fluorescence. Okay, and actually what's really important to understand about this diagram is uh, this energy with the, with the red line right here, this minimum energy, in terms of the singlet excited states that you can have for S1, this represents the minimum energy, consequently also the maximum wavelength needed to produce fluorescence. If you go up here to the top, which I'll do in purple, up here at the top, this energy, in terms of these singlet excited states, this could represent the maximum energy it could have, likewise the minimum wavelength. And the reason I know these relationships is because energy and wavelength are inversely proportional to one another. Okay, But the key here that we want to understand is these, this point right here, this red bold line, this is the minimum energy and the maximum wavelength needed to produce fluorescence. Because once you get to this point, notice that you can emit a photon and that's the process of fluorescence. Okay, So here's what can happen basically with fluorescence. So for example, I'll just do the very general case. In the next video, we're going to look at a specific case called resonance fluorescence, but I'm going to show you a pretty general case of fluorescence. Okay? So here's what can happen. I can start out with my you know, sort of electrons in the ground state, and then I expose it to photons of light, and it absorbs a photon. Okay? And let's say that it absorbs a photon exactly with this energy right here. So the energy that it gets to is right here. Okay? So notice that this energy of the photon is going to be greater than the, than the minimum energy needed to produce fluorescence. Okay? So what's going to happen is the molecule or atom is going to, it's going to change conformations a little bit to alleviate some of the strain caused by the increase in energy. So you know, down here, you, know, you had your electrons sort of in a comfortable state. They like to be like that. But you raise the molecule up in energy with that photon, and now the molecule is a little bit uncomfortable. It doesn't like to be like that. So it's sort of going to try to change shape a little bit, maybe to alleviate the strain a little bit. And this process by which it's you know, changing shape a little bit to alleviate the strain, these are called vibrational relaxations. And notice, in the context of this picture, you have to go through several levels of vibrational relaxation, right? And so every time you do a vibrational relaxation, number one, it doesn't release any radiation, meaning it doesn't emit a photon. So these are emissionless uh, transitions in energy. Okay? The only radiation producing transition that we have is going to be the actual fluorescence. So these vibrational relaxations, these are radiationless, as we would say. They're just really changes in energy to alleviate the strain produced by raising in energy so much. Okay, so we get vibrational relaxation, and that's going to take us basically to this point, the minimum energy or the maximum wavelength needed to produce fluorescence. And then what can happen is, let's do this in, let's say, purple. Okay, um, 
what, what can happen is you can then relax a little bit. So maybe it relaxes like this. So you get fluorescence and maybe it gets down to this energy position right here. So now what we've done is we've transitioned basically between this singlet one excited state and now the singlet zero state. This process of changing um, energy states uh, between two points that have the same spin quantum number, that's fluorescence. Okay, so if you really wanted to get technical about fluorescence, it's energy transitions between uh, two points that have the same spin quantum number and it produces radiation. So those are two key conditions that have to be met. And so you get down to, say, this energy right here, okay? But notice it's not the ground state. So what has to happen a little bit is you have to have some more vibrational relaxation in the S0 state. And you're going to have this vibrational relaxation, right? And it's eventually going to get you down to the final ground state, which is where you started from, okay? So what had to happen in most cases of fluorescence? Well, you absorb a photon. So this process right here, this is actually absorption of the photon of light. It raises the molecule in energy, and it sort of tries to change shape a little bit in order to alleviate the strain produced by the increase in energy, and it gets down to the minimum energy or the maximum wavelength needed to produce fluorescence, and at this point, then, it emits a photon of light. Okay, So this is the point at which it emits the photon, and that process of emitting the photon basically between two energy states that have the same spin quantum number, that's fluorescence. And then, you know, maybe you get down to something that's in the S sub zero state. And it, it's a little bit above the ground state, but then you have to do some more vibrational relaxations to get it to the absolute ground state energy. Okay, And I want to clarify, it's not like this is zero. No, there is some energy there. It's just this is the lowest possible energy that you can have. This is the ground state Okay, for the electron configurations. Okay. And by the way, this fluorescence has usually a, an approximate time limit. It occurs basically anywhere between um, basically 10 to the minus 8th to 10 to the minus 4th second. So this is a pretty quick transition. It doesn't stay in the excited state for a very long period of time. And then what ends up happening is you emit the photon, and there are actually detectors out there called spectrofluorimeters. We'll talk about those in other videos. And they can actually measure fluorescence. Okay, So they can help you identify you know, different molecules that you have in uh, your mixture or whatnot. Because it turns out that different molecules fluoresce at different wavelengths. So if you know the wavelength of fluorescence of a molecule and you detect that wavelength being fluoresced by the spectrofluorimeter, you can make a pretty good assumption that maybe that molecule is in your mixture. Okay. So I hope this video gave you a little bit of intuition on fluorescence. In the next video, we're going to look at a special case of fluorescence called resonance fluorescence. Um, which is a more specific uh, term for a special kind of this. So I hope this video helps. See you in the next video.